Today, I will be talking about the most valuable technical skills that you can learn as a designer. So this one came as a question to me on LinkedIn, where someone was asking about the tech stack that they should learn in order to get a job as a designer at Google. More specifically, that person was asking about programming language. And my answer to their question was quite simple. As a designer, you don't need to learn a single programming language to get a job at Google. Don't get me wrong, it's still important to learn about programming language so that you can better collaborate with engineers. That being said, I don't think designers should code in their day-to-day -day job. And the reason for that is that designers and engineers have very different roles. When you're designing, you should be in this mind space where you're free of any technical constraints. And this is really hard to pull off if you're also the person who's going to be coding those design ideas. While designers don't need to learn to code, there's still a lot of technical skills that they can learn that will make them extremely valuable to their employers. This is my list of these most important skills. Number one, master the design software. When I first started out as a designer, I was absolutely terrible. I was so bad, in fact, that in my second year of design school, one of my teachers grabbed me, sat me down and explained to me that if I didn't improve and fast, I would likely never get a job as a designer. Back then, I was a very logical kid. I found that design was way too abstract and subjective and I couldn't wrap my head around it. But then I figured that I could understand one thing and that was Photoshop. So I found out about a website called psd.totplus.com, which was the biggest Photoshop tutorial website in the world. And what I did is, Every single night I will come back from work or from school, I will sit down in front of my computer and I will just do a bunch of Photoshop tutorial. I did that for about a year and by the end of that year, I had become so good at Photoshop that I was actually better than most of my teachers. This did two things for me. The first thing is that it gave me a lot of confidence. Even though I was still far from being a good designer, at the very least, I knew how to translate ideas from my head into the screen and that changed everything. This also gave me my first job because at that point I had become good enough at Photoshop that I could start writing my very own tutorials. I was 20 years old, I was still in design school and I was already writing and publishing for the world's biggest Photoshop tutorial website. This was incredible. It gave me a ton of confidence, but on top of that, having that line in my resume opened a lot of doors for me afterwards. So if you're just starting out, I highly recommend that you start mastering the design software. Learn about Sketch, Figma, Adobe XD, Photoshop and Illustrator, and learn those tools to a point where you can actually start teaching them. If you do only one thing and this is it, I promise you it will do wonders for your career. Number two, photography and illustration. Back to my story, at that point, I was now very good at Photoshop, but I was still far from being a good designer. As I said, I found that design was way too abstract and subjective to me, and I couldn't understand it. All of this changed when I stumbled onto an article called Landscape Composition Rules. This is an article written by a traditional painter where he breaks down all of the different techniques that he used to make his paintings more interesting. For example, he talked about how paintings need to have a strong center of interest and have strong visual lines to draw the eye of the viewer towards that center. He talks about a bunch of other stuff, but the point here is that all of these rules perfectly translate to design. This is where I started to get it. For the first time, I could understand that art was not so subjective after all. I will add a link to that article in the description down below and I highly recommend that you read it. Trust me, it changed everything for me. Now, you don't need to get into traditional painting to learn about those rules. You can learn those rules by getting into photography and illustration. You see, when I moved to Silicon Valley, I was absolutely terrible at both photography and illustration. But because I was the first and only designer at my company, I had no other choice but to learn those skills. And I noticed as I was learning those, I also improved tremendously as a designer as well. As you learn those, not only you will become a more valuable designer because every employer out there love a designer that can do both photography and illustration, but going through the process of learning those skills will feed back into your design and you will become a much better designer in the end. Number three, motion design. Back in the days, design was very static. 
Designers will just do PNG and JPEGs that they will give to the engineers and the engineers will implement it and that was basically it. Today, things are very different. Now, almost every website and app out there have some sort of animation in them. There's everything from the super big grand animation that just pulls you right into the product all the way down to the barely visible micro animation. This is why it's very important for you to get into motion design. And you can do so by learning about the basic UI animation tools such as Principal and Flintle. If you want to go deeper, you can also learn about After Effects. And the last thing I will recommend you is to learn about the Disney principle of animation. So there's a book called The Illusion of Life written by two Disney animator. And in that book, they break down all of their secrets to make very compelling animation. I have added a link to this principle in the description down below as well. And I highly recommend that you read it because going through that book will make your UI animation so much more interesting. Number four, videography. Every year, LinkedIn does a research where they break down the most in-demand skills around the world. And if you look at the data, you will see that for the past few years, videography has been in the top 10 most in-demand skills. The reason for that is because of the rise of platforms such as YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And almost all of the companies in the world realize that they need to produce some sort of video content to reach their audience. As a designer, if you have videography skills, this will make you extremely valuable on the marketplace as well. So you can learn about videography by learning how to use a video camera, and then you can learn how to edit using, for example, Adobe Premiere, iMovies, or Final Cut Pro. And I recommend that you also learn a little bit about sound editing using Adobe Audition or Audacity. Number five, penmanship. Penmanship is about being able to draw precisely and quickly. This is one of those skills that is unfortunately slowly fading away in the design community. Back when I was in design school, our teacher would make us draw all day long. Today, most of the new designers on the market, they learn everything straight on the computer. And they kind of skip that whole part where you do a lot of drawing on pen and paper. I used to be one of those designers that will always go straight to the screen to start designing right away. My opinion on this completely changed last year when I interviewed at Apple. During that interview, I met with a sketch artist and as I was talking with him, I understood that his only job at Apple is to just sit in meetings and as people are talking about and arguing about ideas, all he does is just draw those ideas on the big sheet of paper. So I did a session with him where I did exactly that and this made me realize how incredibly important this is. You see, when you're in a meeting with a bunch of product managers and engineers and everybody's arguing about product and features, people are talking to each other, but they're not really seeing what's in the other person's head. And as soon as you draw something, whether it is on a whiteboard, on a sheet of paper, then everybody can look at it and then this is where it clicks. This is where people say, oh yeah, I was thinking about something maybe a little bit different and then maybe they draw what they were thinking about. And this is where you can actually start to have a real conversation about what the hell you're actually building. And what blew me away the most by that sketch artist at Apple is how incredibly efficient he was at drawing. In just a few seconds, using just a few strokes, he could draw a fully fleshed out wireframe and everybody could just look at his drawing from across the room and understand what was being communicated. So this is something that I've been working on personally as well. Now, every time I'm in a meeting, I always bring my iPad Pro with my Apple Pen and I just start drawing everything. And I promise you, this has been making my meetings so much more efficient. In conclusion, these past couple weeks have been pretty heavy with the whole coronavirus thing going on. If you're like me, you've probably been doing a lot of social distancing and have been spending a lot of time at home. And I understand that everybody's coping with the situation in different ways, but if you're one of those lucky people who've been mostly unaffected by the virus, there might be some positive outcome from this. For example, a lot of the skills that I've talked about today require the Adobe Creative Suite. And Adobe recently announced that they will be giving a free two month subscription to everybody. So maybe you can use some of that free time that you now have to learn those softwares and develop your technical skills as a designer. I can promise you that if first of all, you're a master of your tools and you know everything about design software. And on top of that, you know about photography, illustration, motion design and videography. 
And on top of all of that, you're an amazing sketch artist and you just facilitate every single meeting you're in just because you draw and you help people get on the same page about what they're building. I can promise you that nobody will ever ask you to write a single line of code because people will understand that your contribution as a designer is just so much more valuable in itself. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something from it. If you did, feel free to smash the like button and subscribe to my channel because I will be posting more content like this in the future. You can also follow me on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and on Instagram. You can ask me any design questions that you might have. I would be really happy to answer them. And who knows, this might lead to another one of those videos. That's it. See you in the next video. Ciao.